Let's have a look at some of the simple things you can do with a mouse plugged into your Surface RT. Obviously, when you move a mouse around, it highlights tiles. If I click on a tile with a left click, it will open the application. Now, once I'm in an application, if I move the mouse to the top of the screen, you will see that the cursor changes to a hand. If I click and then drag down, you can see now that I can either move it into a multitask position or get rid of the app completely. If I move the mouse wheel up and down, you will see that I can scroll up and down the start screen. If I click on a tile and then drag, I can then move the tile around the screen. If I right click on a tab, it brings up its context menu. So I can unpin it, uninstall it, make it smaller or larger, and so on. If I right click on it again, that takes away the context menu. If I right click on a blank piece of the start screen, I will then bring up the context menu at the bottom of the screen, which allows me to bring up all applications. If I move my mouse to the top right hand side of the screen, I can bring up a charm bar by bringing the mouse back down. If I move the mouse to the bottom right hand corner, I will get a little minus icon, which I can click and then zoom back. Again, I can click to come back into the screen. If I move my mouse to the top left hand screen, I can then switch to different applications, such as the desktop, or bring it back to bring up the, uh, the program list. And if I bring the mouse to the bottom right hand side, I can either do the same thing or right click to bring up a set of options that you would use from the desktop. The concept of a pin may be foreign to you when it comes to electronic devices and the Surface RT forces you to use them. So here are the basics. This is your start screen and all these tiles are pinned to your start screen. You should consider pin tiles as your most used and important apps. So if you want to remove something from the start screen you can unpin it. To do this, flick the tile to bring up its context menu in the bottom left hand corner. Choose the unpin option and it will disappear from the start screen. It's important to know that this doesn't uninstall the application. You can swipe down from the top of the screen and then press all apps in the bottom right of the screen to find the unpinned application. Flick it again and you will have the option to re-pin it to the start screen. When you do this, it will go to the end of the start screen, so you will have to pick it up and place it where you want it to go. So that's the basics of pin tiles and you can take this principle into applications. In this example, I'm going to pin a favourite website to the start screen. So in Internet Explorer, I have directed my browser to the BBC iPlayer website. In the bottom right hand corner of the screen, there is a pin icon. And if I press that, I can choose to pin the website to the application as a favourite or pin it to the start screen as a tile. Now when I return to the start screen, there it is. So look out for pinning opportunities as you play with your Surface RT. By now you should have picked up some of the basics of the Surface RT, but the tablet sometimes behaves in different ways even if you do the same thing. For example, on the start screen if you swipe in from the right hand side and select settings you have one option here for tiles. In this option you can turn on administrative tiles which reveals a whole boatload of options that help you maintain your Windows tablet. I say Windows tablet because it's stuff like defrag, disk cleanup and the Windows firewall. Now if you go to your desktop and then do the same thing which is to swipe in from the right hand side you get some options that may be familiar to any Windows user. First up is the control panel which works just like the control panel on your Windows computer. So you can configure all sorts of things and we'll look at those in another video later on in the series. You can also personalise your desktop and get into the real nitty gritty of how the tablet works. Have a little play and find out what changes you can make, but just remember what they are and what your original settings are. So remember, swipe in from the right and press that settings button everywhere you can. There's always cool little things lurking around all across the Surface RT tablet. In a previous video, I showed you that tiles can be put into groups on the start screen. When tiles are grouped together, they stay together, so that if you zoom out on the start screen, you can easily pick up that group of tiles and place them somewhere else on the start screen. When you are in this zoomed out state on the start screen, you can also name your groups by tickling that group of icons. So flick up or down on a group and a single option button will appear in the bottom left hand corner of the screen that says name groups. Simply press on it and put in a new name and there the name will appear above the group. So, just to repeat, flick the group to bring up the name option and then name it. It's as simple as that. Now, when you zoom back into your start screen, you will see that the names of your groups appear above the tiles. 
This should help you maintain your groups and make navigating around the start screen even more intuitive. Obviously, if you want to remove a name, simply repeat the process and delete the existing name. Unlock screens have become a popular source of displaying information to the user before they go into the main operating system, and the Surface RT is no different. In this example, we can see that the Surface RT is connected to Wi-Fi, a general battery reading, and how many unread emails I have. Swipe in from the right-hand side of the screen and choose Settings, and then choose PC Settings at the bottom right. On the Personalization page, you will find this section called Lock Screen Icons. Press on any of the plus symbols to add a new icon from that selected application. The single plus icon at the bottom allows you to display a detailed status from an application, and this will sit next to the clock as demonstrated here. As the Windows application market grows, more and more applications will take advantage of this lock screen icon feature. So play about with these settings frequently to see what's on offer. When you're in desktop mode, the Surface RT acts like a computer, and that includes mouse controls. So if you have a mouse plugged into the USB and right click, it brings up the usual context menu. All standard stuff, but what do you do if you don't have a mouse to hand? Well, you use your hand of course, or more specifically, your finger. Long press on the screen with your finger until a small square forms. That triggers a right click action so that when you let go, the context menu appears. This means that common PC actions are still possible even if you don't have a mouse. In this example, I have long pressed on my SD card to create a shortcut on my desktop. And now I am long pressing on the shortcut on the desktop itself in order to rename it. So remember, all you need to do to do a right click without a mouse is long press until that handy box appears. When you're in desktop mode, the Surface RT acts like a computer, and that includes Windows controls. So, if you open up a window, you can use the controls in the top right to minimize, maximize, window, and close. Press the top bar of a window, and you can drag it around the screen. You can also resize windows manually too. So, in this example, I'm grabbing the corner of a window to resize it. You can also grab the sides of the top and bottom of a window to resize them just horizontally or just vertically. Bear in mind that with your finger this is a bit tricky to do and not as precise as a mouse, so don't be surprised if you don't pick up a window sometimes. Next, if you drag a window to the side of a tablet screen, it will automatically resize itself to half the screen, so that you can do exactly the same on the other side of a tablet. That's simple multitasking folks! And finally, drag any window to the top of the screen to make it completely full screen. While some of these things may be incredibly obvious, this video is designed to demonstrate the fact that the Surface RT has a desktop and how familiar it will be to Windows users. When it comes to multitasking, you can treat your Surface RT like a regular PC. It can handle a lot of things at once, so you can just keep on loading and loading and loading and loading and loading those applications. To show a recent list of the applications you have running, you can swipe in from the left side of the screen and then swipe back to the left side of the screen to show a thumbnail of each application that's currently running. But as I said at the beginning, the Surface RT runs just like a regular PC, so you can even do the age old trick of going to the tablet's desktop and pressing Ctrl, Alt and Delete at the same time to bring up the traditional task manager. If you press the More Details button at the bottom of a task manager, you can get a more complex breakdown of not only the resources being used by the open applications, but also a thorough breakdown of all the processes your tablet is currently running. Now, you can, if you wish, shut down applications from here by long pressing on the application to execute a right click and then choosing the shutdown option. But the more intuitive method of closing down applications, and the method you're likely to use most when you're within the application, is to swipe from the very top of the screen down to the very bottom of the screen in a fast motion. This effectively swipes the application away. As a result, a very quick way of closing applications is to swipe them in and then swipe them down. You can even do this within the same swipe action if you wish. The Surface RT predominantly works on a navigation system of left to right. This means you can do a lot of scrolling to get to where you want to go. 
On the start screen, you can pinch to zoom out of the screen to get a wider view, which is pretty useful. However, I bet you didn't know this. You can also do this action in applications too. Let's take the native news application as an example. If I open up the application, it's full of content and I could scroll from left to right for ages. However, if I pinch, it brings up category links so I can quickly jump from one location to another. So in this example, the gesture is the same as on the start screen, but the result is slightly different. And you will find that each application does act slightly differently to a pinch action. In this application called PrimeTube, which is a YouTube application, pinching literally does feel like zooming out of the action and then zooming back into the action. And then there are some applications which simply ignore the pinch action. You would have thought that AppyGeek, another news application, would be perfect for a zoom out option, but apparently not. So, make a point of checking out your applications to see what you can do with Pinch to Zoom, or Pinch to do anything else for that matter. There's already a lot to like about the Internet Explorer browser that comes with the Surface RT. It's quick and it can handle all sorts of pages. And have you noticed how quick my browser is? That's because I've made a couple of tweaks that not only speed up the browser, but protect it at the same time. Here is how to do it. First, go to Internet Explorer on your desktop. You will need the Tools menu, but to begin with, it's not there. So here's a little trick to make it appear. Long press on the blue bar portion of the window and then select Menu Bar. This will make your menus appear as they usually would on any desktop window. Keep that tip in your back pocket as you may need this again for other desktop programs in the future. Now press Tools and choose the Tracking Protection option. This will bring up a window that shows you all your active tracking protection lists, or TPLs for short, on the tablet. Tracking protection lists enhance the privacy of your tablet by sending do not track signals to websites. It means you protect your data and websites don't load as much crap such as adverts when you're on the page. Basically, it makes your tablet safer and faster. Now, these lists are not offered, maintained or controlled by Microsoft and some lists might be a little too strict for your needs if they're designed and targeted towards children. It may stop you accessing the content you want to use. So you're best off starting by selecting some of the more popular lists and if you're not happy with them, you can disable them by going back to the tracking protection screen as illustrated here. Whatever list you decide to use, tracking protection lists are a useful addition to the browsing experience of a Surface RT.